I've had several people ask me to discuss how to harmonize a melody on their dulcimer. And I decided that I would use the piano keyboard because it's easier to visualize than the dulcimer fretboard. So I hope this is helpful to you. I want to show you on just the white keys, for those of you who don't know, this is a scale. And this is in the key of C. And you can see how there are these white keys and some of these white keys are separated by black keys. So anytime you have these uh, notes in succession on these white keys without a black key in the middle, it's known as a half step. And anytime you have a black key in between each one, we call that a whole step. So this is a, a, in the key of C here. This is the C. The first interval here is a whole step, and the next interval is a whole step. And you can see there's no black here. This is called a half step. A whole step, a whole step, a whole step, and then another half step to complete that octave. Now, if I was in a different key, like most people, a lot of people play the dulcimer in the key of D, then my, my whole steps would be arranged differently. But they would still be, the first, the first interval is a whole step, the second interval is a whole step, the next interval is still a half step, and then a whole step, whole step, whole step, and it ends with that half step on the top. All right, so that's our, our major scale, and we know I'm going to go back to C because it's easier for people to visualize. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So between mi and fa is always a half step, and between ti and do is always a half step. All the rest are whole steps. So in a, a scale, when we put notes together, those are called intervals. And there's two kinds of intervals. One kind of interval is called a melodic interval. And a melodic interval is when two notes are played in succession and not together. So what I played here was a melodic interval. Uh, so here's another one. So that's an interval. We, that happens to be the interval of a third, but it's a melodic interval because they're not being played at the same time. Another third, another third. Those are all melodic intervals. This is a second, a second. Those are all melodic intervals. Now, a harmonic interval is when two notes are played at the same time. So if I played those same thirds at the same time, that would be called a harmonic interval. Okay, so any two notes uh, together is called a melodic interval or a harmonic interval, depending on whether they're played together or separately. So together is a, a harmonic interval a fourth, and if I played them separately, it would be called a melodic interval. Okay, so if I were to take the harmonic intervals of a third and add another third in that key on top of it, I would have what is called a triad. And this triad, meaning three, harm, three notes harmonically played at the same time, triad, this happens to be called a C chord or a C triad. It's because it's based on the, the root note of C here. So this here is a, a, a triad built on the first note of the, of the major scale of C. So that is, we call that the tonic. The tonic is the note that, that, is, that, is, that is establishing the tonality or the key. So in this case, since we're in C major, or C Ionian, it's also known as, the tonic is C. The tonic note in the key of C is C. So the first triad that I build off of that note is called the tonic triad. So I can continue to build triads off of every note in the, every tone in the, um, in the, in the major scale thusly. So 
So this would be the tonic triad. And you don't have to, th this, I'm just going to tell you this just for your own uh, amusement, but this is your tonic and this is your super tonic and this is your median. This is your subdominant. This is your dominant. This is your submedian, and this is your leading tone triad. So anytime I can make a I can make a, a chord based on any note of the scale just by putting those triads flip on top of each other, stacking them on top of each other. Now in uh, in in classical chord theory, we label all of these triads with Roman numerals. So if there's a major triad, and the three major triads are the tonic in the key of C, that would be C, the subdominant, which is F in the key of C, and the dominant, which is G in the key of C. So any tr major triad, we would use a capital Roman numeral. And so look at how I number this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the, the tonic triad would be called a one chord. And that chord is the tonic, and it would be uh, a, a capital Roman numeral in the classical musical uh, chord theory. The four chord, one, two, three, four, that's the chord that's built off of the, the, the fourth tone of the scale. One, two, three, four, do, re, mi, fa. That's the F chord here, or the subdominant, or the four chord. And that four chord would be, would be um, written as a capital Roman numeral four. And the other major chord is this five chord. Do, re, mi, fa, so. One, two, three, four, five. I build a triad off of that. And that would be written as a, a capital Roman numeral five. So those are your three major chords in a major scale. One, four, five. Tonic, subdominant, dominant. One, four, five. In Nashville notation, uh, they sometimes use the note Roman numerals, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just use regular numbers. One, four, five. So in most of your major uh major scale tunes, you can use these three chords for all of your, your harmonies. One, four, five. Now notice what I did there. This is C, E, G. That's my triad on the, on the C chord. What happens if I decide that I want to flip it over? I could voice it differently by taking this note and moving it to the top. So I still have C, E, G but I put the C up here instead. That's called an inversion because I flipped it on top of itself. This is the home base or root position. And then I made this into an inversion. That's the first inversion. And if I invert it again by putting this bottom note on top, I have another inversion. Those are all C chords. C, 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 C. And that's very helpful to know in dulcimer music too once we get into how we want to harmonize uh, not only a song, but if we want more than one dulcimer playing a part, we want to know how the, the chord is being played so that we know how those notes affect each other. All right, so that way I can play the C chord, and then if I want to play the F chord, rather than jumping up to the F, I can just play the inversion. If you notice that this F chord, F, A, C, they have a common pitch to them. The C is in both the C chord and the F chord. So instead of jumping up, I can keep the C playing and just move these two notes up to the, to the F and the A. That's my C chord and my F chord. And then I'm in a position to go up to the G chord just by moving everybody up one. See, here's my G, my B, and my D. In my home position, there's my G chord. Here's my inversion, and then I can move it up again if I want to take that tonic on that inversion. So that's a much more elegant way of playing one, four, five, one than going one, four, five, one. <laughs> okay, so that's just a little chord theory in your major 
scale. Now, if you're in a minor scale, um, the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, the pure minor scale is based on la. So do, ti, la. What we have here is our, um, what we call the relative minor scale. There's the A. So in the key of C, A is my relative minor because it's built off of La. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La. Do, Ti, La. Ti, Do, Ti, La. So if I take my scale, Do, I'm oh, sorry, La, Ti, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, I've got my pure minor scale. That's also known as Aeolian. That's the Aeolian mode or the pure minor scale. So I have the same things that I can harmonize there. I've got my one chord here, two chord, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. So very much like the, um, like the major scale, my one, four, and five can work quite well in minor too. So I've got my one chord in the key of A minor, my four chord, is this D minor, my five chord is this E minor, and then it brings me back to the A minor. So if I wanted to, I could... Another thing about the, the A minor is that the, the, the chord beneath it is very fun if you're doing the pure minor to have that be... Uh, something that you use instead of the five chord. That's very common if you're using pure minor, which is very common in traditional modal music. In, in popular music and in classical music, they change the minor key oftentimes to include a leading tone, uh, which is that they, they actually add a, a, a um, they, they augment or raise the seventh degree. Sometimes they even raise the sixth degree. Sorry. So th then we get that, what we were doing before, A minor, D minor. But then instead of E minor, they'll do E major. But that's very difficult to do on a, on a diatonic dulcimer. So we don't do a lot of the um, harmonic minor scale uh, in dulcimer music. Usually if we're playing a minor key, we will play it in the modal, pure minor. minor. And you can do uh, all kinds of wonderful things with that. So in my next video, I'm going to show you actually how I can use these tools to harmonize the melody.